an experienced fighter in Frankie Santos. Frankie Santos there, 30 years old. He is 17, 7, and 4, but he has been in the ring with the likes of Panchito Bajado and Lamont Peterson. Also, Matthew Hilton, Ricky's brother. So he's been in with world-class competition. He hasn't won those fights, but he's been in there. Take a look at the bioblast for Frankie Santos. He is a police officer in his hometown in Puerto Rico. Again, the experience against good competition. Last fight, won a rematch against Hicklet Lau, who's been around for many years. So Santos figures to be competitive. Taking on your taking on Udell Johnson. And when you see the graphic, yes, that is how you spell Johnson. Udell is 28 years old. He is an Olympic silver medalist at 140 pounds in the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. He is a Pan Am Games gold medalist. So again, the amateur pedigree is there for Udell Johnson. Udell is only 2-0. Again, the Olympic silver medal. Lost a close Olympic finals. Came to the United States in February. He did defect with Guillermo Rigandau, who is in our main event. His last fight was against Justin Paolo. He won all four of those rounds. That was in July. He also fought in May, making his pro debut here in Miami Beach. He had a knockout win in his professional debut. Let's go right now to Takate. Stay in the fight with Teddy Atlas. Teddy. Well, let's start with Johnson, the undefeated, terrific amateur who was a silver medalist. You're bigger and you're better. Be the boss. Go downstairs to his body. And for Santos, well, you're in a tough spot. Use your legs and pot shot from the outside. And hope. <laughs> hope. Hope. Hope is important. Hope, okay, hope is important, <laughs> Brian. Hope. Do never, <laughs> never dismiss right, how important uh, hope is. Hope brings the turn. Well, you know, Santos said he, he, he has gained, he has gained some... Right, much needed question, experience question, and he, he does that. gain hope i spoke to him yesterday he said you know being in the ring against lamont peterson panchito bajado does help him in these situations knowing he's going in That's against right. again not just a top prospect these aren't kids these aren't 21 Santa. 22 year olds no, these their guys, lack of pro fights right. are made up from their great vast amateur career not only that johnson makes up for his lack of pro fights with a great amateur fight career with hundreds of fights but the level of opposition that he fought and beat in the amateurs is better than the level of opposition that he's fighting right now in Santos. As we said, Johnson, 2004 Olympics for Cuba, won a silver medal. And you know, hope is important, but a well-placed left hook better. <laughs> and right now, Johnson, the southpaw, is looking to counterpunch. He's looking to catch Santos coming forward, and he's looking for that left uppercut to the body or to the head. Johnson, and right there, yeah. you saw Johnson, the left uppercut. He's going to look for that punch. He's going to pour with the right jab as a measuring stick, and then he's going to look for that left hand. Johnson already connecting here with the straight left hand, and he has Santos in trouble. This is where Santos will need that experience. Santos smiles, says, all right, you got my attention. Santos has lost seven of his last 12 with only three wins and two draws in there. Santos was also cut over his left eye in his last fight. We'll see whether or not that becomes a problem for him if he gets out of this round. Santos, again, I mentioned fighting Panchita Bajado and Lamont Peterson. Our fans will know those guys are not 154 pounds. So also, Santos has the disadvantage of moving up in weight. This is his first fight at junior middleweight. He came in actually over the contracted weight of 156 pounds. Uh, the Johnson camp waived the quarter pound. They yeah, said that's Ryan, fine. Johnson, as you just touched on, the bigger man. Most of Santos' career between junior welter and welterweight. He only moved up to junior middleweight in his last two fights, while Johnson... Two pro fights have been at 156 and 155 pounds. If that's not bad enough, Santos, you touched on it, came in tonight the heaviest of his career. Mm -hmm. Looks a little soft, too, for a professional fighter we're talking about. In Las Vegas today, by the way, the uh, extra poundage on Floyd Mayweather was not waived. Cost him a good bit of money. Teddy, you and I are going to talk about that. Mayweather Marquez, a surprising weigh-in. Can't wait for you to weigh in on that, Teddy, on Floyd Mayweather. We'll have the full news coming up right now. Udell Johnson, Cuban trunks, Frankie Santos, sturdy so far at the very least in the white trunks. 
and we might get through a round. Oh, we will. We're going to get a few rounds out of Santos. I don't know how competitive they will be, but Santos will find a way, I believe, to survive some rounds. Santos has lost whenever he has stepped up in class, Brian. And he's stepping up in opposition in class again tonight in Johnson. And that might sound funny, again, with a guy 2-0 and all, he's saying he's stepping up, but again, a guy 2-0 and all with hundreds of amateur fights. So Udell Johnson, some good work here in the first round. Frankie Santos still on his feet. I'd like to say something about another fighter that we lost, one of our fighting fraternity, <coughs> one of our fighting members, Brian, Tony Thornton, the punch and post man, who was a fighter with a record of 37-7-1 with 26 knockouts, fought for a world title three times. He passed away this week from injuries that he suffered a couple weeks ago in a motorcycle accident. Tony Thornton was a postman for 25 years throughout his whole pro career. He was known as a gentleman. He was known as a very solid fighter. He served himself outside the ring, inside the ring. You could always depend on him. He will be sorely missed. Sleep well, Tony Thornton, the punching postman. Condolences go out to his family. Thornton, best known for his fight with Roy Jones Jr. Moving up against the Stop. Stop. light heavyweight champion Both of the world when Roy was at his peak at number one pound for pound. All you need to know about Tony Thornton was his promoter, Russell Pelt, never had a contract with him and never felt he had to. Because as solid as he was as a fighter, everybody who knew him, he was more solid as a human being. Second round here, Udell Johnson in the Cuban trunks, taking on Frankie Santos in the white trunks. Santos out of Puerto Rico. Again, he is 30, has the record of 17-7 with four draws. Again, a little more experience than the opponents we've seen so far here on this fight night. We're going to see the same thing with Guillermo Rigandau, where he will fight a man who has a great deal of professional experience. Again, there's that fine line, Teddy, where you you don't want to put a guy in over his head, but there has to be a certain level of progression. I know I hear you, Joe Tessitore, talking about it week after week when you see these amateur stars come up. And I mentioned it, too, when I was talking about De Spain, where he must have had tougher rounds in sparring than he had on fight night, which should not be the case. So I guess it's a tough line figuring where do we want to go. It seems like Santos is the type of guy you'd want against Johnson here if you were manager. Yeah, the two fights early tonight were not. They were less than they needed to be with amateur stars that had hundreds of fights and had fought much better opposition in the amateurs. You didn't need to put them in quite that lower level. But here, as you said, it's a little different story. Johnson's going to get some rounds. The problem is they may not be real competitive rounds. But Johnson will be able to at least stretch himself out and take a deep breath every once in a while. You know, when you have that kind of amateur experience, in some ways, it's a disservice when you put that kind of amateur star in the pros, you know, with such a low level of opposition because they know what they're in with and you're not bringing the best out of them. And again, what are they learning? You want a pro fighter to learn something each step of the way. Udell Johnson getting some good work here from Frankie Santos. Round two. So we've gone through two rounds. A good straight left hand by Johnson. But again, Santos sturdy on his feet. In our main event, we're going to see the all-time great amateur fighter, Guillermo Rigandau. He is now trained by Freddie Roach. Freddie, of course, has trained some all-time great fighters. James Toney. Now he has Manny Pacquiao as well, number one in the world, pound for pound. We asked Freddie, all right, you've been with some of the world's best. How good is this young man? He fights like uh, an old pro, like a throwback. I mean, this kid, he sets things up, he measures you, he counter punches well. Good body punch, good, he's a very complete fighter. This is why I own, I own a gym, because, you know, you never know when the next great fighter in the world is going to walk through your doors. Guillermo Rigandau there with Freddie Roach. Uh, it was actually on Friday Night Fights where 
Freddie Roach was with me, Teddy, up, as you call it, Park Avenue in Bristol with the air conditioning on, where he was watching Rigandow, made some comments. His Rigandow's people, I'm saying, saw those comments and thought, well, maybe we want Freddie Roach to work with him. And it's so far, it seems to have worked out well. This will be the first time Freddie will be in the corner with Rigandow in the last fight. Freddie was traveling with Amir Khan, another you know, world-class super phenom, and could not be in the ring for fight night, but was in the gym with him previously. Which is the most important thing, is what you do in the gym. You have time with your fighter in the gym where you can develop him the way you want to develop him and the way he needs to be developed. Santos, by the way, in that last round, outlanded Udell Johnson 23-18. to 18. Well, what Johnson's doing right now is... Just keeping distance with his long arms, with his great height advantage over Santos, and he's looking to move around, keep Santos off balance a little bit. He feels that Santos needs to be.